Hey, Casey, good to talk to you. Just your, your thoughts on, on going to the Phillies at the spot that you did. What are your thoughts there? Um, honestly, like, you know, I, I didn't really care. Um, I'm just grateful to have an opportunity, you know, to, to continue my, you know, baseball career, to move on to the, to the next level. And um, I think it's time. And like I said, I'm just really grateful for the opportunity that, uh, you know, they're taking a chance on me. Um, so, you know, I'm definitely ready. Dave just mentioned to us that the Phillies had kind of had their eye on you ever since you got to school and maybe, you know, before that. Um, did you get that sense in talking to whomever you talked to with the Phillies? Yeah, you know, I talked to a few of their scouting uh, guys and, um, you know, uh, he was super upfront with me about everything. Um, you know, just basically continue to say how they really liked me. And, uh, you know, I was still on the board somewhere. And then it just kind of worked out to where they were able to, to pick me up. And um, I said, just super grateful for the opportunity. I'm excited. Yeah, Dave mentioned that the Phillies were really shocked that you were still on the board. Uh, long wait for you. What, what was that like? And were you surprised it took that long to go? Yeah, it was a <laughs> stressful day, very long day, but a very exciting moment, I can tell you. Um, something, you know, I, I've worked for my whole life. Uh, it's it's been my all-time goal of my you know entire life uh, to get to this point and um you know here we are talking about it uh day after it happening still hasn't quite set in yet so uh, still trying to figure out how to how to let it sink in but um like i said it's just it's been a crazy ride up until now and um i'm just super grateful to to, to, to be in the situation i'm in um whether i was going first third fourth, fifth round. I didn't, I didn't care. Um, it doesn't matter. Just really, really happy for the opportunity. All right. My final question to you, uh, Casey Opitz has basically already announced he's going to come back. What are your thoughts on the squad that uh, Dave have, have assembled for 2021? Man, um, you know, you're, you're getting the, probably the best defensive catcher in the nation back um, on, you know, a roster that lost two guys only and who's bringing in the number one ranked class uh, in the nation. Um, we'll be expecting uh, another ride back to the World Series for sure. Um, they're going to be extremely talented, and, uh, you know, the atmosphere is going to be great as always. But, you know, what he's – what Coach Dave Van Horn is, is able to accomplish there um, year after year after year. Um, you know, you look at the past four years now, um, he's put together um, – I, you know, including next year, even though we haven't seen it yet, you know, that's going to be four college World Series teams, I think, um, in, in a row um, after losing so many people. But, you know, being able to to do that, um, you know, back to back to back years uh, just says a lot about the program and what he's doing there. And, um, you know, Opitz is going to gonna walk in there with the chip on his shoulder, I think. Uh, he's going to use it as motivation. And uh, he's going to, you know, be a true leader. He's going to lead that team to another World Series. So um, I can't wait to can't wait to watch him, um, you know, be successful and get everything he deserves. Okay. Hey, Casey. Thanks a lot. Best to you, uh, except when you play the Braves. Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, let's go to Matt Gill. Uh, Matt covers uh, the Phillies, Casey. Hi, Casey. Congrats. I'm just wondering, uh, do you think – how much do you think you would have benefited from uh, a full season? And, and what were some of those adjustments you were making right before the season was canceled? And I'm wondering, you know, if that would have helped, you know, for the rest of the season there. Yeah. Um, man, you know, uh, I just changed the mechanic, mechanical standpoint to my swing. Um, I took the load, my, my big leg kick out. Uh, I went to a little toe tap that just kind of – uh, soften everything down. I created, you know, a lot of less movement in my head and a lot of extra movement that I didn't need. And, um, you know, we we worked with that after Houston and uh, come back two or three games, um, started to take off. And then, you know, the season was canceled. So um, I think it, it might have been my best year yet, honestly, uh, if I would have got to continue to play. But, um, you know, there's there's a reason for everything to happen, I think. And um, so, you know, here we are. <laughs> well, will you sign for above slot? Or have, you, have you signed? I mean, Coach made it sound like you, you guys had an agreement already. I 
I won't say how much, but I, I think I got a fair, I got a fair amount for, um, you where I was picked and, uh, for my value. So. And have they told you where they think they envision you playing, uh, whenever baseball ever comes back? We have not, we haven't talked about, uh, anything. Um, this is my first call and it's probably going to be my only one too. So. <laughs> Thank you. Congrats, man. Thank you. Here. Uh, to kind of bounce off of that, you know, during the broadcast, the analyst had actually mentioned possibly you playing at second. Is is that something that you'd be open to? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't see why not. I know when I came into school, uh, Van Horn actually put me behind Carson Shetty at second uh, before <laughs> I moved over to third. So um, I don't see why not. Just another position that you can put in your uh, utility bag, I guess you could say. <laughs> And then what was draft day like for you? Were you with family, friends? Did you do anything exciting? Yeah, so I was actually with my family and uh, my girlfriend came down and um, it was uh, it was exciting. Uh, very stressful two days for sure, <laughs> um, but definitely exciting. You know, something I've worked for my whole life and uh, being able to hear your name called. Um, I don't think there's, you know, another feeling like it, honestly. So uh, just super excited. And so what's next for you right now? Where, where do you go next? Honestly, I don't know yet. <laughs> we haven't, uh, we haven't um, you know, talked to them yet. I uh, haven't decided what we're going to do um, as far as where they want to send you because of all, everything that's going on. You know, there's no baseball, so it's, it's kind of like, you know, what do we do? So I guess it's just kind of a waiting game at this point um, until, you know, they decide, you know, what to exactly do. Uh, come about this. Okay. Casey, thank you so much. Thank you. Bobby. Hey Casey, good to talk to you. What's the, the one thing that you kind of heard the most that you need to work on with your game, whether it's offense or defense, you know, taking it to the next level? Um, everybody just says swing and misses. Um, that's what all the analytic guys say, uh, all the scouts say. Um, so, you know, we're going to continue to work on that. Well, what's the key to that? Is it, is it just patience at the plate? Is it trusting your eyes? I mean, what, what makes that so difficult for, for guys who can't I, play baseball like me? Uh, <laughs> I think it's just reputation, man. Like, you know, in college you get maybe two, 200 something at bats. And then, um, you know, the professional level you get over 500. Um, I just have such a, such a motor that, you know, just likes to go, go, go instead of slow down. I think, um, you know, once I start getting more more repetitions, I think that motor will uh, slow down, um, you know, just naturally. So I just think I just need to, you know, get as many at bats as I can. Thank you. Nate Allen. As, as uh, any particular memories of Arkansas that you, that you, you know, stick out to you in your career here? Man, uh, I'd say my favorite memory is probably um, – it's probably stepping out on the College World Series for the first time, uh, seeing 30,000 to 40,000 uh, fans. Um, you know, that's, that's a big league ballpark. Uh, that's something you dream of as a kid, uh, being able to be a part of. But, um, you know, I was, I was um, you know, grateful enough to, um, you know, be a part of it twice and uh, but you know that first time stepping out there as a freshman and not actually just being in the dugout but um, actually being a part of it being in the lineup being on the field um, being able to impact the game uh, it's it's a feeling like no other as far as next year's team can you see Robert Moore stepping in at shortstop yeah I can actually um, dude super athletic um, he's extremely talented. And I know coach likes to put older guys um, at shortstop because you know you're basically uh, you're basically a leader. You're um, you're you're the quarterback of the field. You and the catcher, you are running the show. Um, so I, I don't know what he will do, but I don't think Robert would be a bad move at all to, to slide on over there. He's uh, he can handle the position well, I think. I appreciate it. Good luck to you, Casey. Thank you. Coach? Yeah, Casey, I, I know Tara already asked you about 
possibly playing second base at the next level. But I was reading that center field is also an option. Is that a position you have experience with? And is that something you would possibly be comfortable with playing uh, at, at the pro level? Yeah, I actually uh, grew up uh, a catcher and outfielder. So um, before I made the transition to uh, shortstop and second base when I was 14 or 15, uh, I grew up playing, you know, catcher and outfield. So um, just another just another position that I, I can play, um, which helps me out in the long run, I think. All right, that's all I got, Casey. I appreciate it. Thank you. Kyle? Hey, Casey, uh, what do you want to say to everybody in, in Lowell Oak? What's your message to the, the Jackrabbit community? Jackrabbit community, man. Um, I know I say a lot, but I would just say, you know, uh, never give up, give up on your dream. Um, you know, I was a kid once in their shoes, you know, from a little town, 4,000, and uh, we had a big dream. And uh, here I am getting a chance to uh, pursue um, all my dreams. And they've all come true. So, uh, you know, just never get down, never quit working, and, uh, you know, keep going after it because, you know, the sky's the limit and uh, nothing's impossible. Thanks for everything over the years, Casey. Best of luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bob? Uh, hey, Casey. How you doing? Congrats. Um, hey, uh, Bobby Wernus is a manager in the Phillies organization. I know you said you didn't know where they might send you and, and maybe – you know, he's not at a level high enough that you'd be playing above that. I think he's in the Gulf Coast League. But um, have you talked to Bobby, and what do you think about the possibility that you could be playing for him in the minor leagues, possibly? Well, uh, Bobby actually called me uh, yesterday, um, and he texted me, and I'm supposed to call him again today sometime. Um, I got a chance to, to work with Bobby when he was here at the university. Uh, before he got the before he got the job offer at the Phillies, um, dude is outstanding, um, an outstanding character as a person, uh, uh, as a coach, as a player. Uh, he has nothing but respect from others, and um, man, there's not a single person that that doesn't like Bob. But um, you know, I, I love Bobby. Um, he used to call something we 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 called our uh, hands team monos. So a uh, little. Uh, thing from him, um, he'd probably appreciate that as a shout out. But man, I'd love to play with Bobby. He's a he's a he's a one time guy. He's a he's a he's a character. He's fun to be around. Uh, he's exciting. I mean, he's a go glove. I mean, that dude has a lot of knowledge to share with the world. So I don't know why he wouldn't want to play with the guy. You know, he's pretty young to he'd be, even be a minor league manager in, in my mind. Anyway. Uh, are you impressed that, I mean, I don't know, maybe he's 25 or something like that. He's already a manager at the professional level? Yeah, I mean, you should be impressed. I mean, the guy uh, is young and he has that position. Um, I think that just, you know, shows a lot about uh, his character, um, you know, his uh, progress and through the years and all the knowledge that he's brought in, um, he's able to teach these guys and pass it on, which is, you know, this says a lot about his developmental side as coaching, uh, which is great for him. Uh, he'll he'll make a good career out of it one day. Uh, I didn't read this myself, but I, I guess I saw somebody tweet about Bryce Harper uh, reaching out to you about your music video. Were, were you aware of that? And if so, uh, what would you take away from that? I was not. Um, Bryce Harper did. He actually FaceTimed me after I got selected. Um one of the probably biggest moments of my life, honestly. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I've grown up watching Bryce Harper play. Um, he's, he's, he's a, he's a stud. Um, you know, he plays the game hard and, um, you know, never would I dream that I'd be on the other end of the phone with him, but, um, uh, man, here we are. And, uh, it, it was definitely cool and exciting and something, you know, I remember for the rest of my life. What did he say to you that, that maybe hit you a certain way or there's, you know, a big takeaway from your uh, conversation with him? Man, um, honestly, I kind of blacked out in the middle of it, to be honest. Uh, it was just so unreal. But, um, man, he just told me congrats and, um, you know, said he's ready for me to come down and get to work. And, um, 
you know, said, uh, he said, man, um, he said, I, I told her, our guy that we had to draft you um, back in February. He said, uh, I've been watching your stud. He said, but I told our guy, like, we, we got to have you. And then uh, sure enough, you know, um, you know, I got drafted by the Phillies. So I, I guess you could say my, my takeaway is, you know, uh, just because, you know, I'm just a college baseball player. These uh, these older guys actually watch. They they, they watch. They pay attention to uh, athletes, um, you know, which is awesome to see. That's good. I just got one more. Wherever they send you, are you going to take your guitar with you? Wherever they send me, I will take my guitar with me, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, man. Uh, enjoyed covering you a bit. Best of luck. I appreciate it. Tom, if you have any more. I'm good. Thanks a ton, Casey. Best, best of luck to you. Thank you all over the years. Appreciate it, guys. Anybody else here before we let Casey go? Give me a wave. Hey, Kyle, I had two. Go ahead, Dorian. Hey, Casey. Um, I was just wondering, you know, as Arkansas is your home state school, leading the program to back-to-back -to -back trips to Omaha for the first time in program history, how do you hope people look back and remember your role as, um, as part of what the programs may have been able to build over the last couple of years? Well, uh, you know, I, I hope they see me as a leader. I hope they see all the hard work that I put in. Um, I hope they see mainly how hard I really play the game every day. Um, Cause I can guarantee you there wasn't a single day where I walked off that field. Even if I was over five or five strikeouts and three errors, uh, there still wasn't a day where I walked off the field and said, man, I wish I, I should have done more. Cause there just, there wasn't a day where I didn't give it all I had. Um, so I just hope they appreciate, you know, what what I've been able to accomplish here, um, what I was able to do uh, with the team. And uh, I really hope they appreciate my love for the game and, uh, you know, all the hard work, your sweat and tears and uh, blood and all that. I just I just hope they see how much I actually put into the game here because, uh, you know, I, I left it all on the field every time. And then I know you've talked about it a little bit before, but could you just kind of expand on what Dave Van Horn has meant to you and your career and uh, how he helped you grow over the last couple of years? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've said it before in a, in a lot of different, uh, you know, interviews, but, uh, man, um, he took a chance on a, on a, on a small town kid and, um, he made it, he made it possible for me to make it up to college. Um, you know, he, like I said, he took a chance, um, and gave me a scholarship, uh, come up there. He put a lot of trust in me. And um, I, I, I think it's more uh, as a family oriented program. And um, I think that's, you know, I text him last night. Um, he texted me, told me congrats, <clears throat> all that. And um, he said he called me in a few days when everything settles down to talk. And, you know, I just texted him back and I just said, I just want to thank you for all the opportunities and just never forget that, you know, you are the reason I'm here because you took a chance on me and gave me uh, tons of opportunities to grow um, as a player, but also as a person. Um, I, so, I, you know, I told him just never forget, you know, that he's part of the reason why I'm here. And uh, I'll always be you know, grateful for that. Um, he's a father. He's a definitely a father figure. You know, you get to college, you're on your own. And um, he's more worried about what you're doing in your free time and in school than he is on the field. And, um, that's a true father. I, I think that that's a, that's a great example. And, um, he's done a fantastic job with us guys. And, you know, it's just, it's just not so much as baseball to him. Um, he wants it to be a family thing. And I think that's great for these, you know, younger kids to see. And I know even Hessen has mentioned it. He was a father figure and that's exactly what he was. He took care of us. Uh, he watched over us. And, um, you know, for that, you know, I'll always be grateful. Thanks, Casey. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Matt Gelb had one more question. Go ahead, Matt. As someone who lives in a big city up here in, in Philadelphia and don't really know much about your town, just can you describe your, your hometown to me? Like, tell me what it's like. It sounds like it's pretty small. Well, I can tell you right now, I'm sitting here looking at five or six big old rice bins, man. Um, we are a big farming farming town. It's all 
it's all fields, it's all corn, it's all rice, uh, it's all beans. It's nothing but beat up old roads and jacked up old trucks and uh, you know farmland. Uh, that's that's really all it is. It's like a small town, hick town. Is exactly what it is. So whatever you're probably picturing, that's probably exactly what it looks like. Got a bunch of you know fish farms here too. Just a bunch of farmland, man. bunch of bunch of trees. Not really much to do here besides hunt and ride around. So <laughs> um, definitely wouldn't want to live anywhere else. So I can tell you that. <laughs>